Greetings. I wanted to give a little video on some content on what's going to be on the quiz that you'll see later today. So you will see a problem that involves acceleration and force in graphing them. And the thing to remember is that it should be net force actually. That the net force that an object experiences, which is the sum of all of the forces that it experiences, the graph of that should look like the graph of the acceleration that the object experiences. The difference, of course, being the units of acceleration, which are meters per second squared, and the units of force, which are newtons. The scaling factor between them is the mass. So in this case, I would perhaps, you could consider asking, what would be the mass in this case? Well, since F equals mass times acceleration, F equals ma, that's a Newton's second law equation, or F net equals ma, you could argue in this case that the mass is three kilograms. A three kilogram mass that's accelerating at plus two meters per second squared would experience, have to be experiencing a force of plus six newtons at that time. So this graph is going to look just like that graph, but it's going to be scaled differently and you'll know how to get from one to the other if you know the mass. That is going to be one of the questions on the quiz later today. And another one will involve launching an object upward from the top of the building figuring out how long it's going to take to land and what will its final velocity be in the y direction. So we're just assuming up-down motion and then graphing acceleration. And you should know acceleration is always going to be minus 10 meters per second squared for free fall, which is the case here. Graphing the velocity. If it's launched upward, it's going to have a positive initial velocity. It's going to go negative. It's going to cross zero when it reaches the highest point, And then it's going to become a negative velocity. Uh, at the point at which it's landing, it's going to be negative. And they will not be symmetric if the object is not launched and landing from the same height. So if it's launched from the top of the building, the initial velocity will not be the same size as the, as the final velocity. It will be opposite in direction, positive and negative, but not the same size. And of course, graphing the position versus time. And I did do an example like this in class, so please check those notes. <coughs> As far as lecture, there's several other videos, none of which is more than six or seven minutes long, just like this one, relatively short videos. Please watch them. They'll help you with the homework and with the content that we'd be discussing in class. I'll talk more about the content on Thursday, but to get a good start on the homework, watch those videos. And one of the big topics that's going to be discussed in those videos is how to represent forces, uh, one of the topics anyway. And I'll, I'll take a minute or two to do that now. If the object is this box, let's say, and I want to represent a force acting on it to the right, I can put an arrow on it like that. And it's going to not only have a force acting in that direction, but if that's the only force acting on it, it's also going to accelerate in that direction, based on Newton's second law, F equals ma. If I made the arrow go downward, then that box would only be ex experiencing a downward force, which is on the earth you could think of as the weight of the box and it would then accelerate downward and the acceleration of all objects downward is g as you know and but it would be g is of course equal to the uh, acceleration which is the weight of the object which is f divided by its mass that is going to equal the object's acceleration downward which is going to be g we'll talk more about that but that that's true for any object you drop if you have more than one force acting on an object, you could represent them like this. You could put one force acting that way and another one acting the other way. And the total force, the net force acting on these two objects, is the sum of this. You could say minus that. This one's going to be negative because it's acting to, towards the left. This one's going to be positive acting because it's acting towards the right. That's how we represent forces in drawings. And we often will give them a name depending on the type of force that's acting. We'll talk about friction forces. There's kinetic friction and static friction, which we'll talk about more on Thursday and next week. There's also the force due to gravity, which if it's acting downward, like in this case, force due to gravity would be F followed by a little g. I'll put a little text in there. So that's how I represent gravity. That's what I would call it, F, a little g. And the, the other types of force that we'll talk about will be, one is called the normal force, which is when you push an object against something else, 
there's a force that responds to it. That's called the normal force. That's an F with a little N next to it. So you'll see F, little N, and it's a subscript N. That's the normal force, which we will also talk more about. So FG, FN, and then in lab, you will talk about Newton's third law. That's when two objects interact. It's an equal and opposite force between the objects. You'll see an additional, in addition to FN, you'll see another one called FT. That's a tension force that exists in a string. So FT is a tension force. So these are a few forces that you'll be seeing. You got FG, you got FN, you got FT. Different types of force, but they're all measured in Newtons. This tension force is caused by a string. It's a pulling force. The normal force is caused by contact. It's a pushing force. And gravity is a force, it's a pulling force caused by the Earth or another object acting on another object. And we'll talk more about these specific forces soon. But I wanted to give you that little heads up. And then there's another video that talks about Newton's laws. It's not a video I made. It's very useful. I suggest watching it before the lab also. Okay, I'm going to end this video. Good luck. Have a good lab. And I will see you on Thursday. Take care.